Good morning, Hope Church. Good morning, Hope. Good morning. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. What a beautiful morning the Lord has given us to share together in worship and in service. So come on, it's time to bless the Lord. It's time to lift his name on high. Rejoice and sing with us this morning. At this time, we are going to have a scripture and a prayer by our own Reverend Gerald Smith, Jr. Amen. Um, in lieu of the day, it's being Mother's Day and Women's Day, I want to read Proverbs 31, just a little portion of it. Uh, it starts as uh, Proverbs 31, uh, verse 10. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with her eager hands. She is like the merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Um, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of the idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Amen. Amen. Let us uh, have a very quick word of prayer over our day today. Gracious Heavenly God, our Father, again, we thank you. We praise you for this daytime and opportunity you've given us, you've presented us. We thank you, dear God, for allowing us to gather once again virtually to come and celebrate you, to worship you, and to honor you. We pray, dear Father, that today we would uh, seek your will, seek your way, that, God, we would uh, celebrate and honor the women of our church and the mothers of our church. We pray, dear Lord, for those who are uh, perhaps uh, saddened by this day uh, because their mother is no longer here with them. And we pray that you would give them strength, give them encouragement, touch their heart, God, mend the brokenness that they feel. Father, you said that you would be all things to us. And so we pray, Father, that you would be the mother. Um, you would be the mother to us this day, God. Uh, we pray for the word that's going to go forth. We ask that you would bless it, bless the man who will bring it forth today. We ask, oh God, that all these things are according to your will and purpose and that they bless you, God, in this day. We pray this in the strong and the mighty name of Jesus, who is truly and certainly the Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, again, we want to say uh, welcome and uh, celebrating the mothers and the women of Hope Church. This is, you know, obviously different. Uh, we would be in the house and we would be uh, praising God for you and celebrating you. So today we have a, a, a little special gift uh, for the women of hope as well as the mothers of hope. And we hope that you feel appreciated and loved today because you are special. Amen. Mm -hmm.
So Women of Hope Church, we pray that you feel loved, that you feel special, that you feel encouraged on this day. And we are so blessed because even though we are not in our normal sanctuary, um, our men, they still came together on Friday night and they prayed for us, much like they do every year before Women's Day. So no matter if someone calls you mom, god mom, TT, first lady, sister, friend, encourager, we're just grateful on today for all of those in our Hope Church family and those that may be watching. We're grateful today that our men, the strong men of Hope Church, continue to cover us and lift us up. Amen. So today we're getting ready to hear the word brought by our pastor. We know that God has given him a word for us today. And before he comes, we do have um, a special worship offering to get our hearts and our minds ready to hear the word brought to us by our Hope Church Worshiping Arts team. Can you only imagine, can you imagine just standing before the king?
Praise God. God bless you, Hope Church, people of God, friends and family. What a wonderful demonstration of, of praise and celebrating who God is. Just imagine how wonderful it is to, to abide in his presence for eternity. We can think about who we are and where we are right now. It's also wonderful just to be in his presence right now. And uh, I just give God glory and I give him honor. I ask you to join me in the word of prayer, please. Master God, we thank you and we praise you for your love, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, God, for the privilege that you've afforded each of us to be your people. We pause in your presence, oh God. We humble ourselves before you. And we pray, Lord, that your divine purpose and presence will be accomplished in and through our lives, that we would live for your glory that our lives, dear God, might be instruments in your hands. Use, dear God, to build your kingdom, to bring deliverance to your people, and to exalt you among the nations. We thank you, God. We give your name praise. Now we pray, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, to our life and our living. Encourage us, strengthen us, and show us the path forward. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. God bless you, people of God. God bless you, mothers. It's, it's wonderful to celebrate another Mother's Day, a time we can celebrate the, the greatest gift that God has given um, the people in this kingdom is, and creation is, is a true mother. So we, we appreciate you for who you are, for all that you do. But I'm going to invite you and encourage you to come and see Jesus with me. I, I, I still believe, no matter what's going on, I believe if we can see him, we can make it and keep our eyes on the master. He has a way of getting us through. He'll make a way out of the door and he'll make that way just, just for you. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 27 and 28. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. And it reads, I prayed for this boy. And since the Lord gave me what I asked him for, I now give the boy to the Lord. For as long as he lives, he is given to the Lord. Then he bowed in worship to the Lord there. I have prayed for this boy. I hear my mama saying that. I have prayed for this boy. What a godly serve. So just for a little while, Hope Church, if you can be with me, I want us to consider together the thought, Mama's grace. Just talk a little bit about how God has strengthened this, this asset in his kingdom called mama. Now, it's, it's not just those who, who give birth, but, but real mama. So, so as the little clip said just before I came on, it, it really, it, sometimes mama could be big mama or, or, or auntie or cousin or or, or, or best friend, or it, it could be someone who, who God has allowed in your life to fill a void, to, the one who comes alongside. It's, it's that woman that you think about when you think about being at home and safe and comfortable. It's the one that you, you think about when, when you, you're saying that she makes me feel like I'm, I matter, like I am somebody. It, it's mama. And
bring that taxi driver who gets you to the, the rehearsals and recitals and, and all the places that you, you need to be in. Mom would just kind of get all of the, the things going in our lives and, and making sure that all the things touch the right places when you fall and, and you hurt yourself. Mom was the one who kissed the boo boo and tell you that you're okay and make you feel better. Better. Daddy just tell you, okay, get up and all about your business. But mama will, will take time to, to, to wash it off and, and make it feel like, like that big, that little scratch is a, requires major surgery and she just walked you through it. You recovered and now you're feeling all wonderful. Mama is this, this, this one, this perfect gift, this wonderful gift that God has given to children. And, and somehow, some way, some of us, we may not ex have experienced the, the wonderful gift of, of mama from the biological person who gave birth to us, but God has somebody special, a first lady, a, a, a deaconess, a, a missionary, a friend, a, a pew mother, a grandmama in the church, somebody who's that's there who can make you feel baby special, that God has done something wonderful in your life. God has blessed you. How does that happen though? Because if you think about it, mama has a lot of a lot of pressures of her own. Mama still got to be a woman. Mama still got to be a wife. And mama still got to be an employee somewhere. And mama still got to take care of all the stuff. She has to learn it. And mama has dreams and desires. And mama has things that she wants to accomplish in her life. And she has things that she wants to do. And she has to take care of everybody else while she's trying to get her stuff also taken care of. Where does mama get all the strength and where does mama get all the ability to be mama and still be the woman that God's called her to be, the wife that her husband needs her to be, the employee that her job needs her to be? How does mama take all of this stuff and put it together and make it work? It doesn't seem possible to most of us. Most men, we, we would collapse under the task of multitasking. We wouldn't be able to keep all the fire, all the irons in the fire at the same time. We, would, we wouldn't be able to do that. We couldn't do laundry and cook and, and take care of kids and, and do our, our work or, or our school work all at the same time and it all comes out wonderful. We wouldn't be able to do that. We, we would fall, fall, we would call, fall short and, and kind of flat trying to make that happen. So the question is, well, well mama, how do you do it? How do you get the strength and ability to be who you are and to be wonderful like you are. It is the grace of God. It is, it is, it is mama's grace. It is God who has blessed mamas to be mamas. It, it has nothing to do with biology. Is she share your blood? It's, it's the mama who watches over you. So we can take a look here at the text and we can see how God's grace has empowered a mama to, to, to just keep going when, when life is hard and life is difficult and there's, a, there's some disappointments to her personally and, and there's sacrifice she has to make. This mom was called Hannah and Hannah, she was, she was broken for a while because she didn't have any children and, and Hannah wanted a child and, and, and then this other woman was making fun of her and teasing her because she didn't have the children or, or the resources that the other woman did and, and it was just a terrible thing for for Hannah, but yet Hannah made it through and she ended up giving birth to this fellow named Samuel. But, but when we look at the text, what we're discovered here is, is that God blessed Hannah, God blessed mama with a mama's heart. So one of the reasons that mama can keep things going is because God has blessed her with a heart that only mamas really understand. It's a heart that can see past the failures of a child, a heart that can see past the struggles that a child is going through, a heart that can see beyond what's going on. Daddy would say, boy, it's time for you to grow up. Girl, it's time for you to get, and mama would still see that child that needs a little bit of encouragement, needs a hand up, needs a way to, to go forward because mama has this heart that is, that is assigned to her by God to do the job that God has called her to do. How is that in the text? Well, in, in the text, it says that Hannah prayed for her son before her son was even conceived. Hannah prayed in her heart. She prayed for her son. She prayed.
prayed for that boy and she continued to pray for the boy. He said, I have prayed for the boy. She prayed that she would have the boy. She prayed that the boy would be given there by God. She even made commitment as what she would do and how she would raise the child and, and how she would give the child back. So Hannah prayed for the boy and she covered him and cloaked him with prayer. Don't you know that mama covers you with prayer? You ripping and running in the streets. You 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 go through this and that. You're on your way to college. You you going to high school. You're going in and out of situations. And, and your mama is on her face. Your mama's on her knees. Your mama is calling out your name before God, saying, God, watch over my baby. God, take care of my baby. God, make sure that my baby has what she needs. Give her joy. Give her peace. See, daddies pray for the big stuff. Keep them safe, God. Give them a job, God. God, watch. Mama be praying for the stuff that make your life work. God, give them joy. God, give them peace. And God, give them rest. And God, give them comfort. God, see, mom is praying, comforting, comforting us in prayer. My mom is 99 years old. And I know she is still praying for me because that's what mamas do. They pray for their children. And, and we know that mama prays for their children because, like Hannah, mama's lives are colored by the desire for their children. Hannah's whole life was covered and covered and shaped and, 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 and fashioned after a desire to have Samuel a part of her life. All, every mama's life changes when she has a child, and every mama's life will never go back to the skin what it was before she had that child. Why? Because mama always is, is there her whole life. Is shake is molded around making sure that child is safe, making sure that child moves forward. So mamas are there watching over. So our lives are not just an appendage to mama. Our lives uh, actually helps to transform and shape how mama acts and what mama does. So when you deal with you, who you are and we go out and we act crazy and we do dumb stuff and we, and we do things to hurt us, we're not just hurting us, but we're hurting mama because mama got this, 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 this affinity with us, this attachment to us that nobody else really understands. It goes, many times it goes unspoken, it goes unsaid, it's not recognized because Mama is, 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 is between her and God, is lifting us up and praying for the child and praying that, that the child will pray. And mama can't go talk a lot about it because folk will tell her that that boy, that girl is old enough, they can handle it. Mama's the, mama says, I, I know how old they are, I gave them birth, but 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 still in the in the quiet place of, of mama's peace, in the quiet place of mama's rest, she's still calling out that child, man. She's still asking God to do something special. She's still praying for her Samuel. She's still praying that God will bless her Samuel because that's her heart. And her heart is not going to change. That's her heart. And you can't do nothing about that. In fact, we really don't want to do anything about that. Because every one of us, if it's big mama, mama, or auntie, mama, or cousin, mama, or, or, or sister, mama, or whatever it is, whoever served the, the role of mama in our lives, we want her calling out our name before God. We want her to continue to, to uplift us. And, and if we happen to be mama, it's okay. You go ahead and you keep praying. Other folks don't understand it. We don't always get it. We don't always see it. But you keep calling out the name of that one that's on your heart. You keep crying out to God for your babies. You keep crying out to God to bless the one that is struggling. You keep telling that because we need it. We trust it. We depend on you calling our names out before God. It says that Hannah called out, prayed for this boy, called out to God for Samuel because she had a mama's heart. But the mama's heart is rooted also in mama's wisdom. Mama got pretty with plenty of good sense, you see. Mama knows that she can't do it by herself. Mama knows that she, it requires a God to transform life. Mama knows no matter how, how long she prays or how much she does it, no matter how many times she fasts, how many meals she gets, if, if the person don't turn to God and God don't change your heart, don't nothing happen. Mama understands that. So we see that Mama has great wisdom, and, and we can find that in the story of Hannah. Because the, but Hannah understood that, that, that Samuel was actually an answer to her prayer. He said she prayed for the boy. She had been praying for him. So Samuel was an answer to Hannah's prayer. And that's why she called him Samuel. His name means 
God heard me or heard of God. So she he, she called him what well, he represented. He represented the fact that God had heard her. She knew that because she was able to give birth to Samuel, it proved that God had heard her because she knew what she asked God for. She said, because God has given him to me, because God has answered my prayer, because God has given me what I asked him for. Well, what are you asking for? I asked him for my child. I asked him for my man's son. I asked him for, for that. And because God gave it to me, I named him Samuel, heard of God. God has heard of me. And when we understand what God has done, many times I did it, many times I play, 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 and mama give up, it's because it's a reaction to what God has done, what God has allowed her to see in us and in who you are and who God has called us to be. Mama know that you are an answer to her prayer. Mama pray for you. Mama pray that you will be delivered. Mama pray that you would stand up. Mama pray that you would leave that no doubt somebody alone. Mama pray that you would have enough money to make it. Mama pray that you would get off the bottle. Mama pray that you would stop doing the drugs. Mama pray that you would find your way in this world. Mama pray that you would get over it. Mama pray that your body would be healed. Mama pray that your mind would be right. Mama pray that you would find a good job. Mama pray that you would find a good stop. Mama pray for your life. And because Mama put it, she names some things. Now she can say, that's my child. And look at her now. Why? Because she knows that God has heard her. You're her Samuel. You're the proof that God has heard Mama. And what hasn't shown up yet, Mama still is praying for. Because she knows. Because she understands that God hears her when she calls. And she's calling out your name. Do you not understand that your Mama prayed more for you than she prayed for us? Don't you understand that your mama called your name out before God more than she called her own? That mama lift your problems up more than she lift up her own problems? That mama is petitioning God for your strength, for your help, for your success more than she petitioning God for her own? Don't you understand that mama put you before her? How dare we take mama for granted? We got to let mama know that we appreciate what she does because mama is wise enough to know that we need somebody to call on the Lord for us. Mama is smart enough to know that we need somebody who can lift up the name of Jesus for us over our lives, in our lives, because we ain't paying God no, too much about it. Mama's getting up early in the morning, going to bed late at night, to spend the time in quiet quarters, asking God to do something special for us. We don't see it. She ain't bragging about it. She ain't boasting about it. She ain't wearing it around on a headband. Or she didn't have a t-shirt made about it. But mama is praying for us. And what a wonderful thing. Because mama got great wisdom. She knows. She knows that, that God heard. And, and you know, because, because we hear and respond for God's word the way we do, we, we understand. Mama understands that, that we're a gift. Just like Hannah understood that Samuel was a gift from God. When God allows mama's prayers to be heard, that's the gift. See, most of us, we, we consider a gift when special stuff comes into our lives. Mama says she's been blessed when she sees special stuff come into her children's lives. When she uh, sees her kids, the, the kids that she raised, the ones she prays for, the ones she thinks about. That's why Hannah finally grew into her name. You see, the name Hannah needs to be graced or favored. So up, up until Samuel came along, she didn't grow. She went in her name. The Bible says that she walked around downcast. Her countenance was low. But when, when Eli told her in the temple that God had heard you and you're going to get what you asked for, it says that her countenance changed. Why? Because she understood that now she is really who they've been calling her all along. They've been calling her favorite. She had the favor of her, of her husband who gave her more than anything. She had the favor of being the woman, the wife in the first order. But that's not what she was looking for. But really, her favor was when God gave her the answer to her prayer. And she said, now I'm Hannah. Now I am the favored one. God has favored me. So when, when the mama gets to see our lives turn around, when mama gets to see us stand up and stand Start walking straight. The mama needs to see that our lives are walking holy before God, that we have our own relationship with God. That's when mama feels blessed. That's when mama feels like life is worth it and God has answered and God has heard. It's not when mama gets the big 
stuff, but it's when mama's babies are going to walk with God for themselves. So if we're going to do this thing, let's be a Samuel. Let's be the one to walk upright before God because God is heard and give mama a, sh a chance to shout because she sees that her babies are walking straight. She sees that her babies are loving on the Lord and her babies are following after God. The one that she hours and hours that she has spent praying for is now walking for God, doing some praying on their own, praying for their own, thinking their way through. That's when Hannah starts saying yes. But you know, mamas are strong too. Mama has to be strong. You look at, at, at Hannah, you can see their strength in yeah? because the Bible says that Hannah told God, say, God, look, if you give it to me, I'll give it back to you. Well, now, now that's, a, that's a prayer that you want to pray. It's easier to pray before you got the Sabbath. You can pray, God, I'll give it back before, before you get it. But once you get it, no, no, you, you know what I mean. Look, think about it. When you were broken, you said, God, if you bless me, I'll pay my tithes. But then you get your check. Now it's hard for you to pay your tithes because you got your check. But it was an easy prayer before you got it. But now it's a harder thing to actually do after you get it. But it takes strength and, and, and character and spiritual maturity because it says here that Hannah, who had prayed, God, if you give me the boy, I'll give it back to you. Now that she got it, she got to give it back. Now that she got this, this, this Samuel, she had the answer to her prayer, this gift from God, she has to release control over it. She has to release it back to God. Say, God, now here you go. It takes some strength. Mamas make sacrifices that we don't know, know anything about. Mamas make, they give, give themselves in ways that we are yet discovering and finding out. Mamas just, they give us gifts and abilities and, and never stand up and, and make us uh, give her an applause. We, we have Mother's Day, but we also have a mother blessed life every day of our lives. Somebody we call Mama is blessing us praying for us, fixing meals for us, washing clothes for us, doing our hair, helping us with schoolwork, driving us somewhere. Every day, mama is doing something to bless us. So we give her one day and a good meal and say thank you. But what about all of the other days when mama is blessing us and taking care of us and never does she stand up and give us a bill, give us a check and tell us that we have to pay and to on the way out. She doesn't do it. Why? Because mama is strong. And mama knows that she can carry us better than we can carry her. And mama holds us. That's what, that's what Hannah was doing. Hannah had to give this boy back to God. She made a sacrifice. She didn't know she was going to have another child. She didn't know if this was the only one that God was going to bless her with. This is the only one she had prayed for. She hadn't prayed for all the rest. She didn't know if she was going to get more. But she had to give up all she had because that's what God required. And when mothers do it right, they give up all the child back to God. God, take all of them. Take, take him in his pain. Take him in his sorrow. Take her in her joy. Take her in her mistakes. Take her in her victories. Take her in her defeat. God, you have all of her. See, when mama's do it right, they need the whole child of God. And that takes strength to do because mamas are human and they want to hold on and fix them just like the rest of us. They want to be there. But here we see that what uh, uh, mama really do, what Hannah does for Samuel, is she goes and does the best thing she could ever do for, for Samuel. Give him to God. She takes him and leaves him at the temple. And there he learned how to worship it. There he learned how to pray. And there he learned how to serve God. And there he learned how to be the man that God was calling him to be. Because mama had the strength to keep her covenant with God and do what was right for that child. That child grew up to be Samuel, the last judge of Israel. Because mama had the ability and the strength to keep her word and to be faithful to God and be the mama that God had called her to be. Samuel became Samuel. He was a strong man of God. Now, not only, not that, not only did God hear Hannah, but his name 
first where he learned to pray. He learned to communicate with God. Look at the strength of mom. Mama picked up somebody that didn't even exist a little while ago and brought him to a place where he was able to grow and to be strong and hear God for himself and to petition God for himself. Mom, that's what a mama does. That's the grace that God has given mama and allowed her to do and within the family structure is to help us and hold us together. And they, they say that the man is the head. Yeah, but mama's the neck. Mama's the glue that holds this thing together. And we all, we bring it all. We make it all work because mama has done a great thing. But you know, mama has joy in this thing too because the Bible says that, that, that Samuel, he's the, he's, he, as I said, he's the, the last judge of Israel. But this man, Samuel, he was also, he was also the, 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 the last, uh, the, not the last, the priest and the prophet that appointed the first two kings of Israel. He was a kingmaker. And God used him to put Saul and David in office. He, this woman who, who, this lowly woman who was walking over her face down, this, this Hannah woman who, who prayed for, for her son so much so that the priest thought she was drunk. This woman was able to, to take her child and rear her child in such a way that this child walked so uprightly before God that God used him to establish the first two kings within the kingdom of God on earth. Look at what happens. If there had not been a Hannah, there may not have been an anointing of Saul or David. But God put Hannah in a place where Hannah could bless Samuel and Samuel could run up to serve God and God could use him. Mama, you don't know what that bad boy is going to be. You don't know what that disobedient child is going to act like. You don't know what's happening. You just continue to be mama because one day there's going to be joy, unspeakable joy as you look and you can see what God has done with your baby, what God has done with your child. What God has done. If you don't believe me, look at you. You had a mama and somebody prayed for you. But look at where you are. You now pray for yourself. You now can trust God for yourself. You now know how to do the right thing. You know that you now know how to live holy. You didn't know that before. But because God had a mama over you and a mama who prayed for you, you are in a position now where you have your own relationship with God because of your mama. So now you can turn and be somebody else's mama and help them to grow and know that one day you will have joy and joy unspeakable because of what God has done. So it is a mama's grace. Today we pump the brakes. Today we hit the pause button so we can recognize the grace that mama, that God has put on the mamas of this world. And we can turn to our mamas and say, thank you. Thank you for trusting God. Thank you for being wise. Thank you for having strength. Thank you for having the heart that you have. Thank you and forgive us. Forgive us for all the time that we've overlooked you. Forgive us for all the time we've taken you for granted. Forgive us for all the time that your hard work and your effort has gone unnoticed. And forgive us for all the time that we got angry because we didn't want to hear what you were telling us because we were too afraid that it would be right and we wanted to do wrong. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, Mama, for what you've done because you're, a hand, you're an instrument in God's hand that's meant to bless us. And we thank you for it. You see, God has blessed us. He's blessed us by gracious moms. To have a heart, to have wisdom, to have strength, to experience joy in such a way that we can take it, she can take an unborn that she prayed for, raise it so it will be used of God to anoint kings. You and I need to be raised. Mama, thank you. Thank you, Mama. Mama, Auntie. Mama Big Mama, Mama Niece, Mama Big Sister, Mama Friend, Mama Cousin, thank you for praying. Thank you for raising me. Thank you for not giving up on us. We thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Hope Church. God bless you, friends and family. God bless you on this Mother's Day. Take time. 
take time to tell your mama thank you. And if by chance your mama has, has went to see, just be with the Lord, she, she slipped away from, from this earth to spend time with God. Just thank God for the mother that you had. And then find someone else who still walked this planet so you can say thank you. I know you pray for me. I know that you love me. And I just want to thank you. Tell somebody thank you today. Every one of us have a mama on you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Bless us, dear God, as we seek love and honor you. Lord, if there's one that has not accepted you as Lord and Savior, we pray, God, that they would surrender their lives to you today, that they would live holy before you. I thank you, God, for the opportunity to to celebrate you and all the mothers of the world. But most of all, God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your salvation. And we pray that we'll be, be faithful and we will serve you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Hope. If you will pre prepare yourself now for our uh, guided communion, First Lady is going to come and lead us. So uh, if you have your, your juice and crackers or whatever it is that you have, then uh, let's prepare. And if you if you if you uh, been baptized, you are a believer and you've been baptized, yes, you qualify for communion. You can have communion with us. Uh, we're going to do it collectively. So uh, if you don't have, you didn't know if you could take it or not, you can. And if you're a baptized believer, but you don't have what you think you need, run to the kitchen, get a piece of bread and a cup, a little bit of water, and come on. We go. If God can bless grape juice, He can bless water. So go get it, and, and we'll come back together, and we'll take communion together. All right. God bless you. First lady. Praise the Lord, everyone. Once again, the Lord has brought the word through our pastor. That brings tears to our eyes and joy to our heart. It's still amazing how God uses him to speak right to what our issues are and our needs are. We're so grateful for God who is human in every way and yet God. Only Jesus the Christ can understand our humanity. See our failures and yet save us. So grateful for the man Jesus that was born of a woman, hallelujah, named Mary, who lived 33 and a half years as a human man on the earth, never sinning one time, not in thought, not in word, not in deed. And then took a residency on a cross so that he could give his life for you and I. And while it was a miraculous, a miraculous thing that he did for us, he doesn't want us to think that it was cheap or easy. And so before he gave his life, he took his followers and he sat down with them in an upper room and he had a meal with, him, with them, the last meal here on earth. And he said, listen, I'm going to give you something and show you something because I don't want you to forget what this is what I'm doing and what it will cost me. And so the Bible says that he picked up the loaf of bread from the table and he lifted it up to heaven and he blessed it. And then he broke it and passed it around, said, this is my body, eat it. And likewise, the cup, he did the same and he passed it around and said, this is my blood, drink it. For we need to eat and go. All that Jesus is in our spirits. And so we're going to pray that the same spirit of Christ who is with us right now, he is the ever-present God, would bless the elements that we have, forgive us for our sins, so that we might be able to participate 
in the Lord's Supper and not eat and drink damnation to our soul. Gracious God in heaven, we thank you for another time and opportunity, Father, to share in the table of the Lord. We pray, Lord God, that you would bless every element in anyone's home that is going to share in our commemoration of what Christ did. That you would make it fit, Father, to be used, Father, as we remember what you did. We pray, Lord God, for the forgiveness of our sins, anything that we did, said, went, uttered, even thought, Father, that didn't pass our lips, but a thought that was in our heart, that was wrong, that was evil, that was sinful. We ask your forgiveness. Wash us in that pure, precious blood of Jesus, who is the Christ, so that we would be fit to partake of the table. Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let us eat together. Let us drink together. Eating and drinking all of it. And the Bible says that we didn't have the benediction. We just sang some hymns. Then they left that room and Jesus and several of them went into the garden where Christ prayed because he knew what was coming his way. The betrayer was on his way. And this was the last opportunity for him to obey the father or not. And he obeyed his father right to the bitter end, even though he knew what was going to occur. And so you know what, saints, what we go through, it's nothing like what Christ went through. Yes, we're in a crisis of a worldwide pandemic, but compared to what Jesus did for us, it is what light of age. So let's not betray him in thought or word or deed with murmuring and complaining, but thanking God for safety and shelter, protection, food, family, friends, virtual church service. We are thankful. So bless others, see about others, and don't forget to pay your tithes and your offerings online or using our cash app or mailing something because God's been good to us. Amen? Amen, Kalisha. Minister Kalisha. No reserves. Then we saw no retreat. And then in the handwriting, it was hard to, 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 to figure out because he wrote something else just before he died. But what he said was no regrets. Welcome to the House of Prayer and Evangelism, also affectionately known as Hope Church. Hope Church is a Bible-based Christian church that exists to be like Jesus and fulfill his mission. We serve humanity in response to our commitment to God and as a result continue to mature in the love of Jesus Christ. Our founder and pastor is the Reverend Dr. Clifford Wright Sr. Dr. Wright is a prolific preacher and proficient teacher of the Word of God. His life's goal is to help people just to see Jesus. Pastor Wright believes wholeheartedly that if people can just see Jesus, they can make it. Hope Church is located at 519 East Main Street in Boundary, New Jersey. We invite you to join us every Sunday at 11 a.m. for worship. And smarter.
until we meet again, remember my friend, just see Jesus. All right, Hope Church, what a beautiful worship service we have shared here today. Yes. We're just grateful that we can be with you this Mother's Day, this Women's Day. We pray that the message that came forth touched your heart and that you'll be thinking on it all week. So until we meet again, remember our friends. Just see Jesus. God bless you. Have a great week, Hope Church.